joined by Adam from The Howlers. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Great to have you with us. So for anyone that isn't already familiar with you from The Howlers, can you give us a little bit of background how you got started? Um, well, we kind of got started a couple of years back, um, like pre-pandemic when we were, me and Gus were at uni together. Um, and yeah, we were only really a band about like nine or so months before the pandemic. Um, and then, yeah, that happened. Um, and we kind of had like, had like our best years during that pandemic and sort of um, really knuckled down and, and realized who we wanted to be as a band. And then this year, obviously we got Tom involved as our new drummer and everything's kind of, um, it moves a lot faster, it's been a lot smoother and just a lot more relaxed and better. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a brief history about the band, I guess. And so you can tour right now, so it's Nottingham tonight with Star Sailor, is that correct? It is, it is. The boys are currently uh, unloading the van as we speak, so there might be a little bit of van door slamming and muttering in the background, but um, yeah, we literally just arrived, so. Um, and it's kind of like the last day of like our main run of four dates um there's an alarm going off um it's like kind of the last date of that uh and then we've got a bit of a break and then we're on to um into the studio for like a week or so and then we've got our london show in early october which is exciting any highlights of the tour so far um edinburgh was good because edinburgh's always a party on saturday night manchester was good um, uh, to be honest, they've all been pretty good so far to be honest like it's a weird one because we took ourselves out of circulation uh, this year to kind of like reassess and write and a slightly new lineup um, and we released uh, Nothing To Lose very shortly before the tour after it got delayed and delayed and delayed so we were kind of like expecting it to not be as well attended as our last tour just because of the living crisis and things like that as well um but it's been really good like you know it's been a really good sort of um environment every night atmosphere um norwich the other night was really good um yeah i don't know they're all they've all been good i don't want to pick a favorite it'd be hard to pick a favorite and you mentioned your single there nothing to lose so you worked with black honey on that one didn't you can you tell me some more about that yeah, like the um, the guys in Black Honey have been really good with us, like mentoring us, and, and it's been kind of like a weird thing because me and Chris are demo and write a lot together. Um, not so much like write as in like have input in the song structure or anything like that. It's more like challenging um, me to be a better songwriter, if that makes sense. So it's almost like you know I'll present a song and he'll go. Oh, you can do better than that and sort of that's how it's come about so we've i've kind of written a debut record and like an album um and a few other bits and pieces as well so with them but um yeah they were awesome obviously when we needed to like replace our old drummer um they kind of get like you know gathered around us and kind of like support doesn't held us up so it was like Oh, don't worry, you can borrow our drama for a bit if needs be and things like that. So it's been awesome. But um, we're planning to go into the studio with them again, which will be fun. Um, but yeah, they're a great band. We respect them and they, you know, they come to our shows and um, give us little tips and things like that, which is interesting. But and vice versa. Um, not that they ever listen to us, but hey ho. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been good. They're, they're, they're a great bunch to work with. What's the best bit of advice that they've given you? Um, uh, so when I when I perform, because I'm like doing like everything, like from like rhythm to lead to singing to you know whatever it is, and I happen to be a frontman at the same time, I kind of like get lost in it a little bit and um, like trying to focus. I tend to like close my eyes at moments where I should have them open. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. I've been told so many times, like, open your bloody eyes, man. Um, but I think that the advice they kind of gave us was just like, kind of like, keep keep at it because we've got something like unique going. There was a point this year where it, 
the band almost ceased to be. So um, if it wasn't for them, we probably still wouldn't be here because they were kind of like, it's too, like, you know, what they saw in us was, in their own words, was too good to, to stop, if that makes sense. Um, which was nice, it was like a little bit of support we needed, but that was kind of like, you know, the best bit. Because we do everything ourselves. We've kind of always like been, um, not a black sheep in the industry, but like, because we don't sound like anything else, we kind of, we have this like real work hard ethic. Like people tend to think that we're either like already signed to someone or um, yeah, we've got all this massive stuff going on behind the scenes. And actually we like, we are really, really grafting by ourselves. So it can get a bit draining sometimes, but, um, but yeah, that's probably the best bit of advice just to keep going, I guess. And you've got a new EP on the way, haven't you? End of this month. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, beginning of next. October 5th, I think, is the new date for that. Um, but we recorded that with them as well. Um, and there's a, the title track on it, further down the line, is arguably like the best track that I've written. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that to come out. It's been like we've been like drip feeding it with singles and things like that, which is kind of cool. But um, yeah, it's yet, it's yet to be. Um, yet to be decided what people think of that until it's out in the big wide world. Have you got any other plans for the rest of the year? We're recording a uh, debut album. So, well, we're recording enough material for a debut album. We'll see how that um, pans out, whether we put it out or not. But um, we have a sh no, uh, London show on October 7th, which we're looking forward to, and then we have a Christmas thing that we're kind of planning slash half planning slash we spoke about it the other day and went yeah probably should really kind of sort that out at the moment um, but yeah ultimately it's just working hard on stuff for next year we also have another record coming out after this EP um, which we recorded recently um, which I keep forgetting about because I keep forgetting that we've done it we're in a different campaign at the moment um, so yeah there'll be something else dropping in November uh, another EP's worth of work and then um, yeah it's, we're kind of really busy like from now onwards for, like forever or as long as we can keep busy I have a bit of a quick fire round for you as well sweet what was your first album that I bought or listened to bought I uh, bought um, I'm going to say it was a uh, like a compilation album of the Kinks stuff, and it was, and it was from uh, Asda's, <laughs> and it and it was like I think the CD was like six quid, but I had a mate who worked in the, like the techie part of Asda's, um, and he gave me staff discounts, so it cost me like one pound fifty or something like that, um, and I binged that for years. Um, but yeah, that, I guess that would be my first album that I ever bought. That I remember buying myself anyway, with my own money, you know what I mean? Yeah. What is your favourite song of this year? Ooh, that's a difficult one. I'm like, I kind of, I kind of, um, when it comes to like new music, I'm not really like big on um, a lot of stuff out there at the moment. I know that sounds really bad, but um, there's not really anything that like super excites me to the point where I'm like, oh, best song ever. Because I think there's a lot of, faux sort of atmospheres around releases and bands at the moment. It doesn't doesn't really seem like authentic. Um, so I wouldn't really know where to begin there. And I'm not going to say our own record because that's just egotistical and I'm, we're not like that at all. Um, but I'm open to suggestions. If anyone's got any suggestions for records that have come out this year that are, that are awesome, I'm happy to listen to them. But, um, but yeah, nothing's really gripped me so far. That makes sense. Yeah. What's your karaoke tune? I don't go in to karaoke, but I remember doing it like a couple of years ago. I remember did it. I did it in um, uh, Soho one evening when I used to drink, and I went into this bar and it was full of like Japanese people, and they were loving it. And I remember the only song I knew, like kind of on this list, that I was like, oh, I'll do that, was um, Land Down Under, and it was just horrendous. <laughs> um, 
And I think, like, so I was with loads of mates from Yorkshire at the time. I think I changed the lyrics to, like, land, a land called Yorkshire. And I sung it in a Yorkshire accent, even though I'm not from Yorkshire. So, that, yeah, I'd have to go with that. But um, what were we singing the other day in the van, which was, oh, uh, Don't You Want Me Baby? That was a good one. That's a good one as well. So, um, one of them. What's been your most embarrassing moment? <laughs> um, in the band or just in life? Uh, we'll go for a band one. In the band. Hmm. Uh, I'm not too sure an embarrassing moment in the band. I did one the other day. Like, I ripped my jeans on stage the other day, which was, which I didn't notice until afterwards. Um, and the other day, a support band of our, like, was supporting us. I really wanted to see them. Um, and I thought they were, I, I thought they were on next, basically. And I went to like the front man. I was like, oh, I'm really looking forward to your set. Like, blah, 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 like, et cetera, et cetera. I love you guys. And he was really polite and he was just like, oh yeah, cool, cool. And then another band went on and I was like, oh shit, have they already played sort of thing? I've just made a fool of myself. Um, so that was quite embarrassing the other day. Um, but yeah, I've not really had any like embarrassing, embarrassing moments in the band. I did one the other day where we've got like a, I, <laughs> I unplugged my guitar on stage by accident. And then I went to plug it back in and I fell over. But no one really saw, because it was like kind of behind the barrier. So I was like, oh, I'll get away with that. But, um, so yeah, that's just in the past like two weeks. But I'm sure there's lots of other stuff I've done stupid or, um, I jumped off stage. When we last time we was in Nottingham, I jumped off stage at Rock City and it was a lot further drop than I thought. And I like, basically like, buckled on the floor. Um, so that was quite awkward as well. I've had ones where I've like walked off stage and then there's like a sound curfew so like they can't open the doors until the sound stop but like the, my guitar was ringing out and the doorman was looking at me going I'm not I can't let you out and I was like dude like you're ruining my walk off like let me out like let me out and um, that was pretty embarrassing um but yeah I guess one, one of them you can, you can pick one you can pick one which was the most embarrassing what's been your most memorable fan experience I thought you said, well, like, it was like either what's your most memorable band experience or van experience. I was like, this could go <laughs> anyway. Um, with bands, I had one the other day where um, my, uh, obviously when you get pictures taken with fans on tour and stuff like that, which is, it always kind of weirds me out because you get imposter syndrome. Mm. Um, but I had one the other day where my parents, they don't really come to shows and, um, they surprised me at a show and a fan went a picture with me and my parents being my parents they were kind of like laughing and winding me up sort of thing um, and this fan kind of picked up on me being made uncomfortable being made, being made uncomfortable by my parents you know what I mean yeah. and um, so they kind of like rallied around me and was like wow oh, I'm going to have a picture of all of you then and they went round one by one with my family and took a picture of every single one of them um, <laughs> um, so that was quite memorable but we've had things like like where dads have brought their kids and their kids have kind of been like starstruck so to speak and i'm just like you don't need to be like as, like we're not at all sort of thing um but yeah one of them we've had a few like our drum like our new drummer's first gig with us like someone wanted his stick signed and things like that it was, so there's been like little little bits and pieces that mean the world to us, but we don't really go out our way to. Um... Well, we you know we go out our way to engage with fans all the time. We we, we talk and spend ages with people after gigs, but um, yeah, I'm still like I get imposter syndrome from it. I don't really, I don't really think I'm that um, deserving of that at the moment. If that makes sense. But that that's cool. What are the best and worst parts about being a musician? Best is you get to meet a lot of people, which is cool. You get to see people all over the world, um, all the country or wherever you're playing, and there's some really interesting stories and um, places you go to. That's amazing. That's what we enjoy. Um, worst is like the 
we're all sold that rock and roll dream based off like Led Zeppelin and stuff like that, and it is not that at all. Um, <laughs> and when you try and tell people it's not like your family or whatever, then they kind of don't really, they think you're lying. But like, you know, the money's kind of not there anymore, so you have to really have a very strong mental self to be a musician these days because you've really got to work and graft and um, be aware that you're kind of going to have to suffer for a longer period of time. Um, there's lots of bad things about being in a band, but there's lots of good things as well. Um, getting to meet people like yourself and talk to people like yourself is nice. Like, I don't, it's, yeah, there's, it's like life, it's just like, it's just a reflection of life, really. We just have a cool job. It's just a job at the end of the day, but it's a job that most people don't really understand the pitfalls and the things you struggle with, but, um, but yeah, I wouldn't change it for the world. And would you like to request a song for me to play on the show? Ooh, um, well, I'm going to say Don't You Want Me Baby, it's got to be that, isn't it? Got to like, be. Uh, but yeah, so that would be my request. And finally, what do you order from Greg's? Vegan sausage roll. Excellent choice. Got to be a, as well. got to be a vegan sausage roll. Um, I'm not a fan of the four for three though. That's just too much sausage. You know what I mean? Like there's three of us in the van. So it's like we all we all get a sausage roll, so there's three. And they go, Would well, you want the next one? We're like, not really. But they give it to you anyway. And it just seems wasteful. So um Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. But yeah, so vegan sausage roll. Okay, thank you very much for chatting. Of course, no, honestly, thank you so much. <laughs>